to graph this aggregate function. So we say for each graph t, we say aggregate, uh, vertex code is our new property which stores the result of the aggregate function and the value is the number of vertexes, vertexes contained in that specific community. Okay, now we have every community has a new property vertex code with uh, um, corresponding value. Now we select those uh, communities that have a vertex count greater than 50,000 because we are just interested in the big ones. And now we want to further uh, analyze those communities, but for that we want to uh, uh, get uh, combine them to a single graph. So we say reduce and we use combination um, to, com to, to build a single graph from all those communities that uh, fulfill the predicate. So now the result of that would be a single graph, a single logical graph. And now we use uh, the group by operator to uh, group this single graph uh, by city and gender. So the result would be a new graph where each vertex represents uh, a, a city and a gender. For example, a Leipzig female, Leipzig male, Dresden female, Leipzig uh, male. And then, um, and also the edges between them. Uh, we also apply just the aggregation uh, to count those vertices. We want to know how many uh, uh, persons are represented by each super vertex and the same applied uh, for edges. So, and uh, of course, we also want to know how many vertices are contained in that group graph, so how big it is. And we say just to aggregate, uh, store the result on the property B count. And we also want to know how many um, edges are contained in the resulting graph. And uh, we also call aggregate. So, on the left side, uh, you see the implementation of that workflow in Java, so the running example. Uh, it's quite uh, quite, this, quite the same, uh, except some, some minor cases. And like I said, it's currently a Java implementation, but you can see you have the operators like uh, subgraph, uh, transform, small for graph, uh, split, apply, uh, selection, aggregation, grouping, yeah. So, and this is running. So, and I uh, tried it out on various data sets. Um, those are all generated by the LDDC data generator. They have two profiles for generating data, graph analytics. Uh, is the one which um, yeah, uh, uh, creates graphs like uh, that apply to the schema that I showed before. Um, those are the number of vertices and edges, the number of persons and nodes relations are uh, nearly that amount um, because this is the one that, uh, that they scale up during the generation. This is the cluster I ran that on. Um, yeah, I think it should be here. Yeah, I used the uh, Flink uh, one. Uh, 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 snapshot version because there were some fixes that are necessary to, to run this. And okay, so let's look at the result. Um, this is uh, the runtime for uh, Graphlytics 100. Uh, so this graph here, and the runtime of the complete workflow that I just showed you before. So as we can see here, um, the runtime uh, gets reduced with the, the number of workers. Uh, uh, we increase the number of workers. Uh, it's better shown here. This is speed up. So um, this is linear, which is uh, ideal in that case. And we can see here that uh, at least for uh, uh, up to eight workers, it's gets nearly perfect. And then it drops a bit because I don't know. Um, okay. So the data sets, uh, second evaluate, uh, third um, benchmarking. What I wanted to see here is uh, how does the, the runtime of that shop um, uh, behave with growing graph size. As you can see here, the number of edges um, uh, grows by a factor of 10 or of nearly 10. And I want to see how the runtime of the algorithm um, um, behaves uh, with an increased number of edges. And what I could see is that uh, the, the expected behavior is linear, so um, it scales uh, very good in that case, so it doesn't get slower with the graph size. Um, okay, this is what I wanted to show. And at last, some um, current state about the framework and future work. So what you see here is that, again, the table um, of operators, the green ones are implemented and you can use them, and the orange ones are currently work in progress. So some students of me and myself, we are working on pattern matching. Uh, sorting is uh, quite uh, interesting uh, on, uh, to implement uh, on Flink. Um, frequent subgraphs, this is what Andre is working on, which is nearly complete. We have to do some more testing. Okay, then the current state, we started building uh, Gradu uh, in the last year, I guess, and uh, in the first implementation we used uh, MapReduce, GRAPH, and some Hive for uh, implementing this, and quickly figured out that it's really complex and the code is really messy, and so we thought, okay, let's just try it out on, uh, on Flink, and we started this in June, and uh, with some basic operators, in December we had a major refactoring, we introduced the uh, unique 
identifiers for these property handling, uh, more operators, refactoring of course, and now we are working, like I said, for header matching FSM. We are aware of uh, some uh, memory uh, that we can, of course, optimize um, the, the footprint of our uh, data, for example, shorter IDs like in MongoDB, for example. Uh, dictionary coding for labels, property keys, and so on. Uh, what we also want to try out, like I said, we use uh, photos at the moment to represent um, our objects. We can uh, want also to try out uh, tuple implementation, which is another way of representing your data in data sets. Okay, of course, uh, we like open source and we contribute to Flink. If you find uh, yeah, bugs or we want to add a new feature, then uh, we do this. And uh, this is working really great. Uh, thanks, Vasya. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I said, of course, we are working on a new OJ connector, and um, yeah, it's a work in progress, and I hope it's finished at the end of February. Okay, I also presented it on Flip Forward, some meetup, and of course, contributions to our project are also welcome. Um, what I'm mostly interested in, in is, of course, use cases, because uh, so we think <coughs> this might be useful. Um, we have another use case from Business Intelligence where it is actually useful to use this framework. Um, but there are maybe more use cases which we no, don't know about because we can't be domain experts in any domain. Um, of course, we can offer uh, thesis uh, topics, and we have also open PhD positions at the moment. So, if you want to do a PhD uh, on that or related topics, you can uh, contact us. Okay, then thank you for the talk. Uh, uh, thank you for giving me the time to present our framework. Here are some <coughs> useful links for you. Um, link this is the LDBC Council, uh, um, which is the data generator and the benchmark for graphs. Uh, here's a technical report, it's a bit outdated. Uh, we are currently working on a new paper, uh, which you can maybe then and read, and which the operators are more uh, detailed, more <laughs> described in more detail. I'm sorry. Um, there's a BLDB paper which describes a business intelligence use, data, uh, use case uh, on top of uh, this uh, data model. And there are some interesting projects that are, uh, were created uh, uh, while building Badoo. One is uh, GBL. Um, maybe, yeah, Michael told it before, it's a, it's a DBNF grammar for graph definition language, for graph definition language, which is very similar to, uh, to Cypher, because we think this is a very nice language and uh, we wanted to add the concept of, um, sorry, the concept of logical graphs to Cypher, now it's gone. Ah, sorry. Just to show you uh, what what we are doing with this, um, I have to what GDL looks like. Uh, so, yeah, this is a chat, so it, I have to show source code, like, so it really exists. Um, okay, uh, so this is GDL. Uh, GDL is a way to define, um, yeah, of course, vertices. You know that, sorry, Michael, it's still an uh, equal sign to call in there. So, sorry, I will change it. Uh, so this is um, our test, uh, is, a, is a test graph which is used in our unit test, um, in our unit test environment and um, to test our operator implementation. So what we actually added is the concept of logical graphs, which you can see here. We define three logical graphs um, with properties and the label, and we say which uh, vertices are contained in that graph using the uh, uh, variables that we defined before, but you can also, like here, uh, define it in line uh, while you define the graph. So this is, we needed that concept, so uh, yeah, this is why we implemented it or wrote an Antler grammar for that. And to show you how this is used in the, uh, in the tests, sorry. example for the group operator and what we do here is um, this is our unit test it starts uh, here and it ends here and uh, if you have ever worked with graphs before and especially property graphs and you thought about how to unit test my um, algorithms then this could be a solution for this problem uh, what we do here is we say uh, we get an input graph uh, using the variable g2 which we saw before in the gdl script and then, then we just say what is our expected result of that operator. So this graph here is the expected output of the group by on the input graph uh, G, G2. And then we just uh, do the grouping, which is uh, yeah, this part in the, in, the, in, the, in the test. And then we just say, okay, if the output graph equals by element data, so it contains the same, uh, the same, has the same canonical representation than the expected graph, 
then it uh, asserts, uh, uh, it uh, evaluates the true, and we just test for that, and this is the test. So it's quite nice compared to really test it by hand. Um, okay. So that's it. Thank you for the time again.
So could you could you plug your seats again, please? Thanks a lot for coming, also for the for the um, I think um, we all like to build stuff, and it's all really exciting when we build stuff, but then at some point the crucial question comes, like my wife likes to ask, but how about performance, right? So if she wants to kill a, a conversation between developers, she always asks, how, how, how is your performance? And people either start to explain very, very loudly, or they get quiet. Uh, so I'm happy that uh, George comes by and shows us another way of um, Measurement performance benchmarking graph databases and, and graph uh, processing solutions with different dynamic workloads. So not just static graphs and static analytics, but also with dynamic workloads. So welcome, George, and I'm looking forward to your talk. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. Um, okay, yeah. So I just uh, so I'm George. Uh, I, just, I just want to mention this is a collaboration with folks at INRIA and also um, uh, CNRS and also uh, folks at University of Fox. So I'm based in Yeah, okay. So uh, this is about tunable benchmarking of graph databases with GMARC. And so this talk is about actually expanding each of these words. Right? So I'll talk what motivates each of the words and why we should be interested in them, especially this late in the day. Okay, first to why graph data. I'm going to skip this slide because I think Every talk has had a slide like this so, so far, so I think we're all, especially if sticking around to the end here, find some motivation, some interest in large graphs, large collections of <coughs> graphs. Uh, but I just want to also maybe throw something new into the mix. So I really like this quote uh, by Darcy Wentworth Thompson. Does anyone know Darcy Wentworth Thompson, by the way? So his claim to fame was, uh, was uh, to introduce mathematics into biology. That was a, a major turning point, actually, in biology was to use math to model biological systems. Uh, but he also has this really nice quote, right, which really motivates uh, our interest in graph data. Okay, so things, so nodes, are interesting only insofar as they, they relate to some other things, right, have edges, relationships. So only then can you put two and two together and tell stories about them. And such as science itself, and such as all the knowledge that we're just I just think this is a nice kind of quote. Okay, so that's graphs. That's an easy enough to motivate. By graph databases, I also think there's not much need for motivation of graph databases. It's in response to these large collections and also increasingly sophisticated analytics on this graph. Now, the past decade has witnessed an explosion of graph uh, data management solutions. Right? Native graph stores, uh, triple stores, um, a revival of interest in data log and relational approaches to the <coughs> Okay, so graphs, graph databases, uh, wide benchmarking. Right, so benchmarks uh, have been actually very successful in the past in, in the general field of data engineering, both for research but also in the industry. Um, but there have been lots of success stories, both on the relational side, but also say, in the XML world, uh, with uh, benchmarks such as TBC, uh, XMARC, and XMARC. Right, so it's clear that benchmarks are good, and we would it would be nice to also have nice, well-defined community shared resources, benchmark resources for the design of the graph right, There's also just a nice editorial in the communications that they came a few years back. Right, so it's not the field it has good benchmarks, then we settle debates and we make progress. Um, so the current leaders, there are graph, uh, graph uh, DB benchmarks out there. So the two kind of leaders currently are the LBC uh, social network benchmark, which Martin mentioned. Uh, in his work. <coughs> and also WATDIV coming out of the University of Waterloo. And LDBC, as we saw, is a, a fixed schema, fixed uh, query uh, workload benchmark uh, with the idea of targeting stress testing uh, query engineering choke points. Right? So each query of these, I think it's a dozen or so queries or some variations, uh, is hand tuned and designed to stress test some aspect of, of query processing. 